Hello and welcome to this DD Boost for Enterprise Applications demo. This demo will focus on DD Boost for IBM DB2 using IBM Data Studio and native DB2 CLI commands to back up directly to Data Domain. For our demo, we are using IBM DB2 10.1 running on a SUSE Enterprise Linux 11 64 bit server. We're using Ethernet to connect to a data domain system shown here on the right. Here's our actual demo environment. On the left is my DB2 64-bit Linux server with IBM Data Studio, and on the right is my data domain system. The data domain system is licensed with DD Boost in addition to DD Boost for enterprise applications, and we've already created a DD Boost user and password with an assigned storage unit. Installation of the DD Boost for database and applications plugin is easy with three basic steps. Using the Linux RPM command, you install the plugin package. Second, on the lower left here, you see that you edit a provided configuration file to match the specifics of your environment. And then on the lower right, you then run a command that establishes a secure lockbox with an encrypted DD Boost login and password. Let's start by looking at the IBM Data Studio GUI. And note that to start with, we only have a sample database. I've connected to this database using the appropriate credentials. When doing a backup from IBM Data Studio, you, do, you right mouse click on the sample database and you go to backup and restore and then you click up backup and you create a new backup sample task. Alright, now if we look at the backup window that we've created for this task, you'll notice that there's some options that you can choose from. So we're going to go to backup image and to use DD Boost for uh, DB2, we're going to select media type as vendor DLL. In this case, for our demo, we're going to pick two sessions. And then what we do is we browse to the DDBoost shared library file, which you'll see is located here. And then we have several backup options. We can do a full backup, an incremental backup, or a delta backup. And we have some other options with compressing, and we're not going to do any of the other options. And then for backup performance, we're going to go down and we're going to use uh, optimized backup images for a deduplication device. Now, when we after we put our options in, we can go down here to the command, and we can actually see the command line that is being generated from the backup that we're going to do. And you can see it's making reference to our shared library file. We're going to open two sessions, and it's see, you see the deduplication device. So we're going to go ahead now and run the backup by clicking on the Run command. And towards the bottom here, you'll see that it started the backup. And on the right side of the system, you'll see the data domain system and the activity in the data domain system. And you'll see that our backup has uh, com completed successfully. And on the right-hand side, you'll note that there is a spike in the blue, which is right activity that corresponds to the backup that we just did. For those who prefer the command line interface and like to use scripting, let's switch over and do the same thing from the DB2 command line. This is a standard DB2 backup command, and we're going to be backing up a sample database, which is owned by user db 2 inst one So let's look at the backup command. Again, this is the standard DB2 backup command. We're going to do a backup of database sample. We're going to specify the user for this database, and I will be prompted for a password because that database doesn't belong to the, my root user. We're going to then load the DD Boost shared library, and we provide a full path for that. We're going to open two sessions. We're going to provide, under options, we're going to provide the path to the configuration file that we've edited as part of our install, and then we're going to go ahead and do this. So when I hit enter, I'm going to be prompted for the password. And after providing the password, the backup will run. And in a minute, we're going to get, there's our backup successful. And we get a timestamp for this backup image. If you'll note here, this is the timestamp that we'd be able to use when we do a restore later. And on the right hand side again, you'll notice that we had a spike in write activity that corresponds to the, uh, the backup that we just did through the command line. Now let's take a look at doing a restore from IBM Data Studio. I've connected to the sample database. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right mouse click on this and I'm going to go to backup and restore and then do a restore. And it opens up a new um, restore database sample in our task launcher. 
All right, now let's look at the options for doing our restore. First of all, under restore type, I've selected restoring the backup as a different database, and I'm going to give it a database name of sample3. As far as restoring objects, I'm going to do a full database restore, and I'm going to select the backup to do a restore from from this table. This is the table of backups that are available to us to do a restore from, and I selected one from this morning. You also have, you can option to change the containers, or you can do some other restore options here. In our case, we're not going to do it. We're just going to leave it the way it is. And if we go down to the command and we uh, expand this out, we have a chance to see the command that's here. And one of the things you might notice here is that there is a known issue with doing restores from uh, IBM Data Studio where it by default has sessions equal zero. And we know that's not going to work. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to edit this command and we're going to change this sessions to be one. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to change that to one. We're also going to provide an option setting like we did before and specify the full path for the, the configuration file that we edited during our installation. So basically, you can see now this is the restore command that we've got. It's referring to the shared library for ddboost that we're going to load. We're going to open one session and we're going to provide the option for the configuration file that we made. This is the backup that we selected from the table and we're going to restore it as sample 3 without prompting. And then if we click on this green arrow up here, this will run the SQL command to do the restore. All right, and our restore has now completed. And now after our restore is finished, let's go back and try and establish a connection now with the sample 3 database which we just restored and I plugged in the uh, the username and password for this database and you'll notice that we have now connected to a new database sample 3 and that's the one we just restored. For those of you who prefer working from the command line let's go back to the command line and take a look at doing a restore. But before we do the restore you can actually go back and get the history of all the backups that you can restore from by leveraging the DB2 list history backup all command. When we run that against the sample database, you can see we get all the information about all the data, uh, backups that we have to restore from, including the timestamps that we can choose from. So now let's take a look again at the actual DB2 restore command. And if you take a look at it, it looks very similar to the restore command that we saw in uh, the GUI. So here's your DB2 restore. We're going to restore a database sample. We're going to load the ddboost library. And we give the path for that. We're going to open one session. The options flags the fact that we're pointing to the configuration file that we set up during the install. And we've chosen one of the backups that we have. Here's a backup information. And we're going to restore this as sample 4. And there you see our database restore is completed successfully. All right, well, let's go back now to IBM Data Studio and see if we can connect to the sample 4 database that we just restored. So we're establishing a new connection with sample 4. I'm providing the username and password associated with this database. We click Finish. We should be able to get a connection, and there it is. We've now got a connection to the Sample 4 database, which we just restored from the CLI. You'll note that we have the original sample database. We've got the Sample 3 database that we restored from the GUI, and now we've got the Sample 4 database that we just did a restore from the CLI. If we switch over to the Data Domain Network view on the Data Domain System Manager Console, we will see the overall deduplication and compression storage savings having ingested in this case 2.7 gigabytes of information and saving about 0.1 gigabytes of information we are achieving an 18.2x to 1 deduplication ratio or storage savings in this case of about 94.5 percent for real world data we would expect to see somewhere between 10x and 30x deduplication thank you for taking the time to watch this video DDBoost for IBM DB2 provides IBM DB2 DBAs with many benefits. The DBAs will have full control over their own backups and restores. It integrates with native IBM DB2 utilities. It's easy to use and flexible with both GUI and script options. The DBAs will have 
full visibility of the backup catalog on data domain. Deduplication storage reduction will typically be in the range of 10 to 30x. You'll achieve fast database backups up to 31 terabytes per hour. You'll be able to leverage mTree replication for disaster recovery, and Data Domain's data and vulnerability architecture provides the ultimate in data protection. For more information on DD Boost for Enterprise Apps, please visit emc.com slash data domain or contact your EMC or partner sales representative. Thank you.